Most of the things that touch your daily life require testing of one type or another. So the food you eat, the water you drink. And it is just assumed that, of course, somebody who knows what they're doing actually does all that testing so that people are safe. NADA is the one that assesses the organisations that actually provide the testing uh, for those safety requirements. It's the leader of the world organisations in quality control and laboratory accreditation. You only need to look at the cars we drive, the homes we build and the food we eat to see how much Australia has transformed in the 75 years since NATA was founded. The partnership with NATA and the benefit to society is interlinked. People rely on measurement every day, often without thinking. When you fill up your car with petrol or you buy meat at the supermarket. Not so many people think about, is that litre truly a litre? NADA tests the tester. We check carefully to see if laboratory measurements are fit for their intended use. NADA has got a very good model as an organisation because it relies on a peer review system. NADA is constantly using the experts in their fields. We've got over 3,000 volunteers who, who donate their time generously to the organisation. One of the things that really impressed me was the assessors that I came across. They were truly subject matter experts. Technical assessors see it as a privilege, as recognition of their capability in the industry. It's a status symbol, but you can't say that. It's more, of a, more than a job. You felt to be doing something in the public good. And it's a two-way process. You learn from them, they learn from you. I don't think there's ever an assessment that I did that I didn't learn something. If you've got expertise, then you should put back in in the same way. It's pretty simple. You can't help but learn from that, and you can't help but be excited. Best job in the world. Our story begins in 1947, as Australia emerges from the shadow of empire after World War II. NATA's founding fathers set NATA up to support the testing infrastructure in Australia. NATA started and really is a result of the Second World War. After the war, we was realised that we had to get more sophisticated in our manufacturing, and this was seen as a way of coordinating the testing and standards. The, the first laboratories to be accredited were, in fact, the Defence's own standards laboratories. Then it followed with the cement industry and some of the other manufacturers of heavy material. As Australia's multicultural population dramatically increases in the post-war decades, nation-building infrastructure and the rise of consumer society fuel huge economic growth. And NATA sets the standard for Australia. The way NATA works has constantly evolved. If you look around the world at that time, most regulatory and procurement testing was done in government institutions. And Australia didn't have the resources to do that. If the manufacturer could be trusted, why don't we accept their data? Trust and collaboration have been a key part of, of what we do. Government support and endorsement of NATA has been critical to NATA over the years. It's understood that if you were to go for a government contract, you know, you need to be NATA accredited. We're recognised by the Commonwealth Government as Australia's national authority, providing formal recognition to testing facilities that meet international standards for the food you eat, the water you drink, the building products that surround you. Australia comes of age during a period of social and political upheaval in the late 60s and 70s as a revolution in global trade brings the world closer and demand for natural resources begins the mining boom. NATA becomes the global benchmark for accreditation services. There was a real realisation internationally of the need to establish a laboratory accreditation system. It's a benefit to everybody in terms of the public health protection of the environment, the quality of goods and services, the accuracy of measurements in trade. The rest of the world, they found out about us and, and thought this is not a bad idea. NATA is a signatory to international arrangements that apply to accreditation bodies around the world. The respect that Australia received from the international community of people who eventually became involved in the same activity is immense. 
NATA was founding member of the International Laboratory Accreditation Cooperation. The federal government helped fund the, the establishment of the regional cooperation called APLAC, which is now APAC. NATA has been very influential in developing the international system of laboratory accreditation. I was always very proud to play a role in NATA, knowing that we were punching above our weight. Australia changes dramatically through the 80s and 90s as the environment becomes a headline story, the economy is reshaped for a global future, and technology begins to find a place at the centre of modern life. It's a period of transition for NATA too. In the 80s, there was a growing awareness that uh, food uh, safety was a big issue. We had to be working with the meat industry to set up laboratories, a great number, because every animal had to be tested for pesticide residues. At the beginning of the 90s, we started to get into medical testing, forensic testing. I think the forensic program, our industry, was quite different to others that NATA had worked with before. We, when we started medical testing, there was a lot of uh, consulting work to other accreditation bodies. Measurements around health uh, more generally are really critical. It was obvious that there was a need to assure the public of the standards of human pathology laboratories. For governments to file the inquiry, keen inquiry, and also the cause inquiry and pathology services, a substantive outcome, I think, was that it continued to recognise the value of NATA. It became mandatory for all of those laboratories to be accredited. The fact that NATA was in place has provided a, you know, an immense number of life-saving actions uh, through the work of its accredited network. The new millennium sees Australia in the world spotlight as a sporting nation and an economic success story. The internet and social media change everything as the impact of global warming becomes a global focus. NATA evolves to face the challenges of the 21st century. Environmental testing really took hold and had, had a focus in the 2000s, and that's where accreditation played a great part in ensuring that laboratories had the capability to do this enhanced testing. In the last 20 years, the way that we work in Australia, the way that we connect globally, changed probably at a pace never seen before. Everything's electronic these days. Uh, people are expecting a, a faster response. We have laboratories that are very sophisticated, have a high level of IT, robotics, use automation, automated testing techniques. And that meant if you were an assessor, you had to keep developing your awareness of, of the technology, the instrumentation that, that laboratories were using. NARA's ability to adapt to changes, especially in technology, has meant that NARA can now work forward to partner and to understand what is lying ahead. At the start of the 2020s, Australia struggles as the global COVID-19 pandemic brings unimagined health, economic and social impacts. NATA is put to the test. I don't think there's been a better example with the work that NATA did to make sure that we were able to respond appropriately to the COVID crisis. NATA very quickly established a mechanism for checking that the laboratories who all started to do testing for COVID was able to do this safely and reliably. NATA being flexible enough to show that the testing that's being done can be relied upon by the authorities because you know, a positive test has enormous implication. NATA is actually proven that they are what they say, they're the real deal. We used virtual technologies, we used Teams, we used Zoom. It's been great to work with NATA to make remote assessments work and still give the confidence that we and NATA need that we're giving the right answer. I've learned and grown to understand how good the organisation is, how credible it is, and during the COVID pandemic, how nimble it is. We've learnt some pretty good lessons from the pandemic and we intend to take those lessons forward and revamp the way we do accreditation into the future. Australia is very different to what it was 75 years ago, and so is NATA. I've been exceptionally proud of, to be part of NATA. NATA's been a wonderful thing for Australia. I've learned and grown with my association with NATA. The wide breadth of interest, so many disciplines, so many people, so many places, while many Australians may not know our name, 
Most have benefited from the work we do. NATO is, is one of Australia's best kept secrets. It's almost a, a secret safety net in Australia that very few people know about and probably still don't. And as we face the challenges of a post-pandemic world, we will continue to draw on the knowledge and passion of our people and associates. I cannot imagine a future without NATO. The things that we stand for aren't going to go away. It was hard work, but very rewarding. Knowing that you make a difference, and you make a difference at the national level. To help build a better future for generations to come. I think the good thing about NATO is that it's not so strict that it stifles innovation. An invisible thread woven into the fabric of Australian society. Trust is what we are underpinning at NATO.